Hello, my name's Grant. Uh, I'm an art tutor with Oxfordshire Adult Learning. Um, I teach lots of different classes, oil painting, acrylics, drawing and painting. And today I'm going to talk to you about basic drawing skills, basic construction drawing, that are the real building blocks of all your drawing. And when you can get that right, everything else follows. Okay, I'm going to do uh, a very simple uh, drawing to start with. Um, I'm actually going to draw a cylinder and I have some convenient toilet rolls here and I've chosen them because they are just nice neat simple cylinders. When you're drawing uh, a cylinder or anything else you have to consider how it looks from where you're sitting and as I see this uh, toilet roll now I've got quite a bit of an ellipse here and as I lift it up towards my eye level, I see less and less ellipse. In fact, when I get it up right up to my eye level, for me, that becomes a straight line. I don't know if the camera's got that as a straight line. So it's a straight line there, no ellipse whatsoever. And the further down I go, the more ellipse you see. The more ellipse you see. The more, the more, the more. I'm going to look at how to draw that. What have I got? I've got straight lines and I've got an elliptical top to it because obviously any circle when you see it in perspective when you see it foreshortened it becomes an elliptical shape and I think the first thing I need to do is practice drawing my ellipses so before I even try and get that right I need to be up to speed with my ellipses and I'm just going to think about drawing that shape I'm sort of going round and round and then I'm going to put my pencil down and I've got an ellipse I'm thinking about it I'm going to draw you a narrower ellipse now I'm going to just draw some ellipses and if you're doing this yourself uh, just relax just flow think about it draw the shape and I don't know if you noticed there I was going a little bit wrong but I just did another revolution round and corrected it so I don't mind the mistakes I don't stop when I make a mistake I just keep going so I'm going to just do another couple of look I'm going to go a bit wrong oh I'm going wrong there but I keep going and I keep going and the shape starts to appear. It'll happen naturally. Don't stop, just keep it flowing two or three times round. You don't have to get it right in one revolution. So let's do a narrow ellipse. Let's do a wider ellipse. Let's go wider. Just loosen up drawing those ellipses. Because if you can do a half decent ellipse, I'm going to go this way so I don't use up too much paper. Why not? I'm going to do a nice wide ellipse now. The wider ones are a little bit harder actually, round and round and round. So I'm getting a more generous wide ellipse you can almost get a circle that's nearly a circle coming on there they're slightly harder to do but you know round and round until you get the shape i'm going to flip that over waste not want not here's a few things you might find people doing you will find some people will will draw an ellipse where they sort of put eyes on it watch that they, what, you'll get people doing that so it looks like an eye don't do that it curves it's just you want to nick those corners off some people do sort of a sausage they go around and then they curve and then they go like that watch that yes you've got your curves but it doesn't flatten anywhere it's a continuous shape so i'm going to sort of correct my sausage there you go i'm going to correct my eye <laughs> There you go. Um, another thing that might, I mean, I'm just playing at the moment and drawing some ellipses, but another thing that might be helpful would be a guideline. So if I want my ellipse to be horizontal, I just draw a horizontal line and I make my ellipse sort of straddle that line. And that stops me doing a wonky ellipse because when people start uh, this sort of thing, they get a great ellipse, but it's at the wrong angle. So let's just do a couple more. There's a, a, a guideline. Let's just draw a nice generous ellipse. And when you've loosened up with that, you think, yeah, I can draw an ellipse. Spend a while practicing, but when you're sort of up to speed, we're going to have a go at drawing a cylinder. I'm halfway there already, so I'm just going to put this nice toilet roll down. Simplest cylinder you can find. I've got two ellipses. I've got an ellipse at the base. I've got an ellipse at the top. Um, I'll go back to my sketch for a second, actually, and just say to you, one of the things I've got to consider just do one more. One of the things I've got to consider if I look at that ellipse now is how deep it is to how wide. I've got to look at that sort of ratio, you know. Um, let's measure that. I'll measure that with my pencil. So that is, that's how deep it is. Uh, it's sort of just over twice as wide as it is deep. And I'm going to look at the, uh, the toilet roll there and I'm going to try and measure the ellipse. So that's how deep it is and I turn it around. Do you know what? That's almost the same. That's about two to two and a half times as wide as it is deep. So I need to get that ratio right. 
Okay, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put myself a nice guide. I've got to go here. A nice guideline so I don't do a wonky ellipse. And I need an ellipse that's about twice as wide twice as wide as it is high. So I think it's something like that. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Let me just sort of measure. Actually, a little bit narrower. By the way, don't keep rubbing out when you draw. If you, you, know, if you get a mis make a mistake, just, just draw over it. I'm happy with that. That's not a bad ellipse. OK, two lines now. And now I have to sort of assess how long this is. <laughs> Um, sometimes when I do this, I, always, I make them too long. I have a tendency to go too long. You might have a tendency to go the other way. But I'm going to put myself a guideline for where I think that sort of base is. I'm going to go about there. Now, the ellipse at the bottom is going to be wider because I'm looking down on it more. I'll explain that more fully in a minute. But um, gosh, that's harder to draw, isn't it? Because I can only see a piece of it. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. Watch me now. I'm going to draw around this. This is the shape I'm trying to draw. Doesn't work when you draw around a toilet roll. Okay, what have we got? That's the ellipse I'm trying to draw. As I see it, that is really wide. That's like, oh gosh, that's nearly a circle as I see it. That's really wide. It's kind of, it's sort of like that. It's really, really different to the top one. So I've drawn all of the ellipse. Let's put this back. I've drawn all of the ellipse because it's easier to draw a whole ellipse than it is to just draw a piece. And when I'm happy with that, you know, I can just beef up the lines I want. If I want to, I could rub that out. I'm not too fussed for the minute. What did I say earlier? I make them too tall. It is slightly too tall. OK, I'll go in a little bit narrower. There you go. There's my ellipse. It's more like that. There's your ellipse. There's your ellipse. There's my shape. I leave all the construction lines in. That's my loo roll. And I'm going to put one more on the top. And I'm going to draw another one on the top of it now. And that's become a very narrow ellipse because it's near, near to my eye level. And I'm going to put another one on the top of that. That is, oh gosh, that's such a narrow ellipse that is now because that's really near to my eye level. Put a guideline in. Sort of something like that. So that's my picture. Three loo rolls. And the ellipses are wider at the bottom because I'm looking down at them more. And the further up they went, the narrower they went. Can I just try that with a camera? If I hold that right down there, you've got quite a wide ellipse. As I start to move it up, you see less, you see less, you see less. And if I'm probably on the line of the camera now, has that become a straight line to the camera? Um, obviously, the, more, the further from your eyes, the more ellipse you see. And the closer to the level of the camera, the straighter that becomes. So it's how you see it. It's showing how it looks from where you're sitting. I'll tell you what, let's, if you do that again, but I'll just take it from your angle here. OK. So just looking at that ellipse, if you're looking down at that ellipse, you see more of it. And as I lift it up, you see less, and you see less, and you see less. And I'll get to the stage where I hit the eye level, the, the level of the camera, my eye level. And that should become a straight line now. Bit more. There you go. So that's a straight line. It's, it's how close it is to your eyes. The further away you get, the more ellipse you see. So look at my drawing. The ellipse at the bottom was wider. As we went up, they got narrower. They got narrower. This one at the top got really narrow. If I put one more on, it would have been an absolute straight line. If you can understand that and you can draw that, then really and truly, you're, that's a really, really good start. You can draw all sorts of cylindrical objects, cups, mugs, bowls, jugs, anything that's broadly cylindrical, you can draw it. I'm going to graduate now from toilet rolls, the most basic cylinder I can think of, to drawing a wine glass. And that's not as hard as you might think. I can already do the hardest bit, which is looking at the ellipses. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I go any further. I'm going to try and establish whether the, the base of the wine glass is the same diameter as the top. And they often are. Not always, but they often are. I'm just going to draw around here. So that's my diameter. And if I put that down, oh, it's slightly different. It's slightly less at the top, but it's very close. OK. For the time being, I think, I'm actually going to draw it as if it's the same. Then I'm going to tweak it a little bit later. So basically, it's just a big, tall cylinder to start with. And that's what I'm going to draw. 
I'm going to draw it as if it's a big long tube. Try and get the proportions right. I'm sort of assessing how long to how wide it is. I'm going to need to go a little bit longer. Just drawing it as if I've fitted the thing inside a tube. Okay, I'll say there's about the base, and I think that's about the top. Now, I've got two ellipses. The one at the top, I see less of, because it's nearer to my eyes. The one at the bottom, I see more of. So, I've just got to assess that. It's harder with glass, because obviously transparent, it's a little bit harder to look at. It, the ellipse at the top is about two by one. So, it's about, you know, twice as wide as it is tall. It's about like that. And I'm just going to draw you an elliptical top. It's about that. Okay. And the ellipse at the bottom, let me have a little look. That is about, okay. That's quite a bit wider, quite a bit more of an ellipse going on. So I've got a much more of an ellipse there. I've got a top and a bottom, a simple tube. But what do I need to do now? I need to turn that into a wine glass. It's symmetrical. And here's another thing that really helps any symmetrical object Put a line down the centre. So I'm going to put a line down the centre of that now. By the way, if you can't do a freehand line that's straight, you could even pick up another pencil and use it, or use a ruler and just draw a line down there. You know, because you don't want a wonky guideline. Because if that's wonky, everything else goes wrong. Okay, let's draw it. Just looking at that shape now, I'm just going to try and get a feel of how that is. It's it, it's quite a short sort of stem. So I think it goes for about here. And I'm just going to try and draw one side of that as best I can. Okay. Just getting a feel, but this is the hardest thing I've done so far, isn't it? Just doing a curve. Just get, I think that's not too bad. And now I'm going to draw the other side, and I'm going to just try and make sure they're symmetrical. So there's a point at which it starts to curve. It starts to curve at about here. Maybe I could put a guideline across, and that's the point it starts to curve at. Yeah. And as I draw this now, I want these two sections to look the same, you know, like a sort of a little shield that's divided in half, isn't it? I want those two sections to be the same. Um, and if I'm happy with that, I progress and I start to draw the stem, you know, and again I'm trying to make the two sides the same and the stem goes down, it's quite narrow. Now, where it places, the stem places itself on the base is quite high up because the, the, the base of that glass lifts slightly, it's not flat, it lifts. Um, and so where you see the stem settle in here is, you know, it's, it's a little bit higher than you might have thought, so really look for that, you know, and I'm just going to say, well, it's actually a little ellipse there. But that, in, in a nutshell, is my um, symmetrical objects. Uh, now, you'll remember that um, the, it, they weren't exactly the same width, so I'm going to have to tweak that slightly. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't remember now, was the base wider? Yeah, the base was the wider one, wasn't it? So what I'm going to do is just shave a tiny amount off that. Just, going to, just shave it in. It's only a little shaving in. Just shave it in a tiny amount. And I'm just going to shave in that ellipse very slightly. You know, it's just almost the thickness of a line. It really wasn't that much different. So just, just shave it in that tiny amount, and I'm OK. I think it helped to just do a simple cylinder to start with. There's my little glass. Now, going back to this symmetrical thing, we're putting the line down there and comparing the two halves. If, if I just deliberately just make that just a little bit off, just a little bit lower that side than it is that side, it's really easy to see because you've got these guidelines there to help you. Um, so use the guidelines, use the line down the centre. I'm going to do a baby sham glass, just one more block, I'm going to go a bit faster. Now that, the base is significantly different to the top, so I'm going to draw that slightly differently. I think what will help with that is to get this bowl top first and try and get that I'm going to get the ellipse that's about a two by one ellipse you got there that's my elliptical top if i need a guideline i could put that in as well that's about my top i'm going to try and draw that bowl shape as best i can you know just try and get that shape right that's how i see it Bit easy to see this one, isn't it, with a rim around it? So I'm going to try and get that bowl shape right, and when I'm happy with that, I will, you know, I can measure here from here to here and find the same. So you can measure it. It's about that. Run the line down the centre, and now I'm going to do the symmetrical thing because I'm just going to sort of just going to straighten up that ellipse a little bit. It's a bit wonky. You think I'd be better at ellipses after warming up? 
There you are. Now I'm going to come down the centre and I'm going to draw your base. I'm sort of going to assess about where that comes there. So yeah, I'm doing this one slightly differently because it's a slightly different sort of design. But it's variation on the theme really. And I've got my lips. How? Oh, one more thing. Really useful. How do I assess the, the, uh, the relative proportion of this base to the top? I can bring a line vertically. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to drop a line down. It's about, it's about there. It's about there. So I'm sort of dropping a line down on either side. Yes, it fits in that space. First call lines, plumb lines, very useful. Drawing in that base. It's a little bit wider. It's a little bit more generous. Change that a little bit. And now I'm going to draw that stem using that centre line to help me. And again, where that stem plants itself into the base, it's sort of quite high up because the base is doing that. In fact, it's lifting up more than this one did. Um, so it's something like that, you know, something like that. I think I could even make that base a tiny bit smaller. But there you are. Symmetrical objects, ellipses, variations on a theme. I drew my elliptical top. I noticed that it was about twice as wide as it is high from where I was looking, so it was about a two by one ellipse. I then drew this bowl shape. It seemed to me the right thing to do. And when I did that, I dropped a line down the centre at that stage. And to work out how much smaller uh, the, the base was, I sort of drew a line up from the edge of the base, and I noticed that it was, it was sort of that much more top. Uh, so I just compared the base to the top. So we've gone from the toilet roll to drawing the baby shower glass in one easy move. Okay, I'm going to draw a cylinder with add-ons. I've got a mug here, I need to think about the handle as well. Now the easiest way to draw it is to have the handle side on. And if you want to practice this to begin with, that's what I recommend. It's then it's just a cylinder with a, with a handle at the side. Um, if you're going to be a bit more tricky-dicky, you can turn the handle towards you. And so you've got a sort of a three-quarter view of that handle. So if you want a challenge, you can try that. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to turn that handle so I see it coming towards me. Okay, a little bit harder. Right. So, first bit's easy enough. I've got a cylinder. I need to look at the ratio of those ellipses. That's about a two by one, as I see it. I'm going to put myself a guideline there. It's about a two by one ellipse. Something like that. I'm going to do it lightly to start with. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. Um, and then I'm going to drop down. And I know, as you will be aware already, the ellipse at the base will be uh, a little bit wider. It's always hard to judge how wide an ellipse is if you can only see the front bit of it. That's why I like to just draw all the way around. I like to follow through and get the whole shape. I think it's something like that. Let's speak that up a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm keeping it very light to start with because I might change things. I do like when I'm constructing things to keep it light to begin with. Um, and then you can just draw another line where you want it. Um, right, now that handle. Okay. So I didn't go into the easy option of making it side on. I've got the three quarter view. Well, here's the thing. If it were side on, if I could turn that so the camera sees that side on, you could, that handle has to bisect through the center of the ellipse. So from any given angle, it will appear to have a line going straight through. So if I turn that towards the camera, look at that sensor line. You know, it's cutting through the ellipse at an angle, but it's sort of still censoring its way through the ellipse. So I'm going to draw that now. I'll do it with that pencil. There's my angle. So that line is what I'm going to draw. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you'll have the handle on at a funny sort of angle, and it will look all skew with, and you won't be able to drink from it. That's my angle. Look what I'm doing there, folks. I'm going to put my paper nice and square on the table. I'm holding this pencil up at the angle it appears to be on the mug. And I put it down there. There's my angle. And if you want to, you can just do that. Now double check, because I might be wrong. Hold it up. Yeah, pretty good. And look, it's bisected this ellipse um, you know, to needs portions. It's bisected it like that. Now that's my guideline for what the handle is doing lower down. Okay, so now I'm going to place that handle and I think when you draw a handle, this handle is quite a simple one, but if you had sort of an ornate Victorian handle on the 
teacup or something. You just brought it as simply as possible to begin with um, until you got it right. Now I can sit that angle there. The handle is, is a little bit lower down. It doesn't come up to the top. So I'm going to sort of draw myself a guideline that's coming out like that, that's at the same angle as this. Do you see what I mean? And I'm going to box that in. And that's another thing. I'm going to just draw it so, so simply. And so I've got a guideline from top to bottom there. And that's where it is. And that's the angle. And it follows through this sensor line here. And when I've got all those coordinates, I'm now going to commit myself to just drawing the sort of curves I'm seeing on that handle. This is curving, yes, but it's kind of flowing through at that angle. That's the thing that catches people out. And as I sit here, I'm looking at how much, how much um, table I can see through the gap between the edge of the mug and the edge of the handle. How much? What, what's that little shape? Look, look, look I'll show you in that little shape there. How much can I see? Um, I'm coming down here, joining it up. I'm sort of drawing it in a slightly clunky way to start with until I put any sort of subtlety into it. I've got my, okay, etc. You're like that, you're sat in there like that, you know. I think I need to lift this up a little bit more, but I've got enough curve there. So I'm sort of modifying the drawing now. I'm lifting up my curve a little bit more there. Yeah, I'm going around tweaking it, but I can tell you this, it really helps to think about the fact that that handle has, has got to visually point through the centre from any given angle. Otherwise, it just looks a bit wonky. Um, so, and I partly use this space that I can see through the hole, the little gap. The handle appears thinner here because I can only see one edge. Here I can see the top of it so it appears wider. So watch that, you know, it's wide here and it narrows down. You know, you just really look at the perspective of it. But as I say, that is much harder. Um, and one more thing, I've only got a mug here, but I turn that mug into a jug. Because if, I, if that were a jug, what they do is they make the spout of the jug directly opposite the handle, obviously. And if this were a jug, you would have the spout popping out here, directly opposite the handle. Are you with me, folks? So I've drawn an ellipse first. I've considered their ratios. I've considered that the handle points through the center from any given angle. That's a bit of construction drawing for you, folks. Okay, so if any of that appeals to you, why not go to the part-time courses section on the website, click on that, and look at all the art and design courses that are available. They're going to be oil painting classes, acrylics, life drawing, more general drawing and painting classes, all sorts of things to fit your needs from beginners to advanced. Um, so why not come along and uh, look forward to seeing you.